Okay, I'd like to show you how to make a wooden pen. There are lots of videos about this, but uh, I have certain jigs and fixtures that I like my students to use, so I want them to see the process as done in my shop. Um, that way they know where to find the tools, where everything goes, and stuff like that. This is the uh, pen that I made. It's in the uh, faculty lounge for the school, for all the teachers to use. It has our, our logo here on it. I just took a scrap piece of wood, put a, a pen holder. This pen holder wasn't designed for this size of pen, so I had to heat it up to make it fit. I'll show you that process later. The chain I have here is just a basic uh, ball chain that you can buy, but I want to uh, do chain mail instead. So this is going to be quite an involved project because there's you know more than just the pen. And uh, to make a chain this long out of chain mail, well, that's going to take some time. But it'll be worth it in the end. So I'll show you the process of making this, and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. All right, the first thing you want to do is choose your wood. I have these drawers here where I have different types of wood. Here's Paduk. It's kind of an orangish red color. Lace wood is, you know, has some spots on it. Kind of looks snake like when you're done. Pomara has two colors to it. You can find a piece that's all dark or all light, or if you're lucky, you might find a piece that I was able to cut right down the transition point of the wood and uh, get half and half or you know 80 20 but of course I have all white and all all black pieces I have some purple some walnuts and a whole bunch of mystery wood and I have some blood wood Red heart, yellow heart, uh, Tasmanian black wood. I just found some olive wood, and you know all sorts of wood out there that you can use. This is a great project to use up some scrap wood, but I like to find some exotics so that the students can, uh, you know, play with some wood that would normally be too expensive to use. I've chosen these pieces here. Um, I'm going to make a pen out of each of these. Uh, after I made the one for the uh, teacher's lounge, the office staff decided that they wanted some pens too, so I'm going to make these ones. Um, so we'll see how they turn out. So the first thing we're going to do is go through the uh, layout process. I like to use just a regular slimline pen. It's the cheapest one out there. And uh, if students make a mistake, then it... Uh, doesn't hurt the pocketbook too much and I usually just give them the replacement parts to try again and it doesn't cost too much. I usually um, charge the students five dollars per pen extra that they make. The first one is part of the lab fee and then from then on an extra pen would be five dollars. If they wanted to go and buy their own kit and stuff and own wood and try to get it cheaper then that's fine but usually um, five dollars is about what they end up paying anyway so um, that works out. Alright, I have this case full of all the parts that you're going to need. To start out a pen, all you need are the tubes. So just grab two tubes, don't grab anything else. The rest of the stuff will come later. Okay, if you grab the other stuff now, you'll just lose it and uh, waste the supplies. Okay, the first step is the layout and you want to make sure your pen blank is long enough. This one is plenty long. There's actually a little bit extra there. So what we want are two pieces of wood that are just barely longer than the tubes. All right. Now later on when we assemble the pen, we probably want to assemble it back together the same way that the wood was to begin with. That way we keep any patterns in the wood that, uh, in line with each other. So one trick is to just make a mark in the center of the piece of wood so that later on when you go to assemble it on the lathe, put it together, then you can line up that line and it'll keep everything uh, the same. All right, so there's that. And then I will put the tube on there. 
and draw a line. Now you want to make it slightly bigger so I've left a little bit extra over here not a lot just a little bit and then put it just a little bit extra and draw another line over here so this is going to be scrap and then we'll have these two pieces I'll take it to a bandsaw to uh, make that cut a cut here and a cut here um, I'm going to cut this short piece off first and then this piece here. Okay, here we are at the bandsaw. I have a miter gauge with a block of wood attached to it to use. It's already been cut a bunch of times here. Don't go all the way through it. Um, I've also made a mark on that piece of wood that should match yours. So if you put your block of wood against that line there, your line should match up with the blade for the cut. All right, I'll go ahead and do the smaller one first. Now the, uh, the line helps us make sure that we put it back together the same way. Alright, I'm at the drill press and hanging on the wall I have all my uh, fixtures and the one that we're looking for is this one right here. I'll show you how to put that onto the drill. It's right here. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is grab it off the wall and it has this right here just these knobs and these slide into these channels down here and allow it to attach to the, to the machine okay, so it slides in there and then we can tighten it down and we need to make sure that the drill bit I'm using a seven millimeter one now it's very important make sure that the right drill is in there this one has these double this double flute here it's the only drill bit that I have that has that so um, make sure that's what it looks like or you're probably using the wrong drill bit <clears throat> alright so that goes up in there this is a keyless chuck so I'm just turning it and the jaws close onto it and I hold the one up here hold the one down here Turn them opposite directions so that it's really tight. All right, and then this should work. All right, I like about 1,500 RPM. That's about right. Uh, the smaller the drill bit, the faster you want it to spin, and this one's fairly small. Okay, so I'm going to lower this down a little bit. Please make sure that this is loose when raising or lowering the table because I've had students crank it and actually bend the uh, rack gear right here going down the side. So do not turn this without loosening this. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend a little time making sure that these are in line with each other. It's going to be boring so I'll do it while you're not watching. Okay, I have everything set up. Make sure that everything is tight. This is tight. These are tight. Okay, so that it's not going to be moving around while we're working. Okay, so here's the one of the halves that I've made. This is the line that I drew. I'm going to make sure that it's up. So we're drilling in the center there. Now you want to put it so that it's the corners of the piece of wood are in the corners of these V channels. So I put it in there and it should lock down. Now if, it, if it's too hard to push down then you need to loosen this right here. This, this nut right here. 
So by loosening or tightening this, you adjust how tight this comes together. Okay, so if it's not tight enough, then tighten that up a little bit, and then go in. It should come about right here, and then shouldn't have to push too hard, like I can do with one finger, but it should be a little, you know, fairly tight so that uh, it doesn't slip in the vise. So if you have it too tight, then you can hurt the, the blank while it's being drilled. So I'll lift it up a little bit there and close it. I have a laser that shows that uh, we're right on the mark there and uh, everything is ready to go. All right, it's important that you don't try to drill the whole thing at once. Um, go down about an inch, then come back up, then go down another inch, come back up, and then go down. And uh, as you're coming up, come out fairly quickly. Uh, you don't want to leave the, the drill bit spinning down inside of the wood when it's not drilling because it'll cause a lot of friction, it'll heat up and make the drill bit really hot and it'll make it get dull really fast. So uh, fairly quickly, but don't you know go so fast. Um, slow down a little bit as you're about ready to come out the bottom of the blank because if you're going really fast as you're coming out the bottom, I've had some of them just break apart at the bottom. So. Uh, slow down a little bit at the end, but the majority of the time you're going to be drilling fairly quickly. Go ahead and watch the example. Okay, there we go. Open it up hole should be all the way through the bottom and then we're ready for the next one again the line that we drew earlier is going to be up close it down do it again all right this nice little clamp uh, I got it from I got it from uh, Woodcraft Supply. All right, now I'm ready to assemble and put the tubes inside. Um, before you put any glue on the tubes, it's good to scratch them up a little bit with some sandpaper. That way, the glue can stick a little bit better with some scratches in it. So just do that to both of those. I'm wearing gloves because I don't like to get the glue on my hands and sometimes you know accidents happen so I'm just being cautious. So I'm going to take some of this glue, this is Gorilla Glue, I'm going to put some of it on this scrap piece of paper here. I'm going to be doing a couple of pens so I'm going to put a bunch there. Now this Gorilla Glue is getting kind of old so it's really thick. It doesn't last very long. So use it while you can. All right, the next step with Gorilla Glue, you want to get the inside of the pen blank wet. So I'm going to dip a, a different stick into the water and just kind of get it damp on the inside. Never use this stick now in in there. If you get any water into the into the main batch of Gorilla Glue it's going to start foaming up and it'll harden on the whole top layer. So don't do that. Always use a fresh stick when getting glue out of there. Alright so I'm going to spread some glue inside here Then put a little bit on the end of the tube and as I'm putting the tube in I'm going to twist it so that the glue is fitting, getting spread around everywhere. Alright, now 
I'll just push it down here. All the way down. Make it flush with the bottom there. Actually, here's the, uh, the line that I drew. Should be flush with the side that you drew the line on. The other side is going to be extra, a little bit extra wood on this side, which we'll trim off later. Okay, I can use my other tube to make sure it's flush. And this is another good reason to have gloves on. If I didn't have gloves on, I'd get, be getting glue all over me. And I'm doing it on the table that I don't mind if it gets dirty. I have this blue plastic here to keep my nice wood tables clean. Don't do this on a nice wooden table. Or don't do it at the sink. I've had students because they want water, they do it at the sink and they get glue all over the sink and that's not good. So There's that one. Now I'll go ahead and do the other one. I already got glue in there. Here's the line. So I'll stick it in on that side. push it down. Now it's going to get kind of clogged up in there, but we have a special tool to get that out. Now this glue, the Gorilla Glue takes longer to dry. You're going to have to wait till the next day to continue. So um, I won't be using this particular piece of wood from here on out. I'll use another one that I did earlier. Okay, as the glue dries, it's going to start foaming up and filling in all the gaps and stuff. And uh, don't worry about that. We can clean that off later. I went ahead and glued up some other pen blanks with some super glue. And uh, those I can use right now. Uh, this next step is usually one of the most forgotten steps. So please don't forget to do this. If you don't do this part, then things will go horribly wrong later. Um, I have this special drill bit, it's called a barrel trimmer, and this long shaft, what that does is it goes down inside the tube and cleans out all the glue, so that's why I was saying not to worry about all that foaming up. And then this larger diameter part here shaves down the wood until it is flush with the brass tube. So if you don't flush it up, then later on you can have problems. Okay, this is an old drill, and it's the only, the only thing I use this drill for is for this particular bit. We never take it out, and uh, it has a kind of a funky old, you know, forward reverse tab there. So make sure it's going clockwise. If it's not going the right direction, then flip that switch. Okay. All right, so I'm going to put this into the vise. You don't want to go super tight, enough so it won't push down when we're drilling, but not so much that we crush the uh, wood. All right, so that only took a little bit. You want to go till you see the shiny brass. Okay, so I'll zoom in there for you. You notice how it's shiny? Now we need to do the same thing to the other side. So I'll flip it over. Notice how I had to go further on one side than the other. That's because that was the side that we just barely put the tube in. And this side we had a little bit extra just to make sure we had room for the tube in there. So one side may have to go further than the other. I'll go ahead and do that to the other one now.
constantly pull out the drill so you can keep checking to see if you've hit the brass or not. Okay, I chose this particular piece of wood because of these lines that go this way and as you tilt it, it kind of does this shifting of the light, kind of reflects it back at different angles and that's going to stay there even after I turn it around and the pen is going to be kind of holographic and it'll look really cool. I, I call this a, a fiddle back. Okay, now it's time for the fun part. I'm ready to go onto the lathe. Now on the lathe we have what we call a mandrel with bushings and these bushings are very important. They help us turn the pen down to the right size. That, that bushing is the same size as the tip of the pen, the, the biggest part of it there. It's also the same size as the, the top of the pen and the center band in the middle of the pen. Okay, So what you want to do is make sure that you turn down the wood on the lathe so that it matches the parts later. Now if you remember the pen at the very beginning of the video, it matched wherever it met these components but then it got wider and then thin and then wide and then thin again. Um, so wherever the wood touches the bushing they need to be the same size but anywhere in between you can do whatever you want. Okay so I'll just put those there and I have a bushing on here so you put a bushing on then you have your wood I want to find the line that I drew there's the line. It's kind of hard to see. It's a pencil line. It's easier to use a marker, but I just had a pencil. So put that one on there so that the line is in the middle. Put another bushing on. And put another piece of wood on. And another bushing. Now as time goes on, these bushings uh, can get smaller due to sanding so they should be replaced and if you notice that one is smaller than it should be let me know and I'll I'll remove it from the uh, pile there. I have a bunch on a magnet so they don't get lost. All right. Now this right here this is a brass uh, little thumb screw here and as I tighten this what's happening is that the bushings are being pushed against the end here and it's squeezing the wood so right now I can I can turn the wood it spins on the mandrel freely but as I tighten this as it gets sandwiched in there it makes it so I can't turn this it's stuck on there now I can turn the whole thing but if I try just to turn the wood it's stuck and that's what we want now they don't have to be perfectly in line with each other anymore. The, the mark is still there. But, so tighten that up. If you ever notice that the wood is not spinning with the mandrel, then you need to turn off the machine and tighten this nut right here. Okay, that's very important. So if you forget to keep this tight, then things are not going to go right. Okay, so that's the first step is to get that tight. If you make it too tight, then you can warp the, the mandrel, so don't like he-man it to death. Okay, so bring this in. And this is called the tail stock, and this is a live center. It spins. Okay, it has some bearings in it. And there's a little indent here on the end, and the point goes inside of that. Okay, now on the other side here, there's a there's a lock, a handle, lift it up so that it locks into place. Okay, here's the other side. So I've locked this into place. And now, I want you to look carefully right here. Notice there's a channel, a little groove, and this screw here goes into that groove and prevents this part from moving in and out. Now when that's loose, you can turn this in and out. Okay, so for some reason this starts getting wobbly, then we can tighten this in without having to loosen, uh, loosen this big one here. So it, what I like to do is just keep it just a little bit loose, not super loose, okay? 
So we can still move it, but uh, so you don't have to tighten this all the way, but don't crank it down super tight because if this is super tight and you try to crank this to tighten it up, it's not going to work and you're going to scratch up the, uh, this part here. Make sure that the, that screw goes into the groove because sometimes people loosen it and then the whole thing turns inside of there and then they tighten it on the, uh, the wrong part and then it ruins the machine. So pay close attention to that piece right there. So I can, I can make fine adjustments with that and make sure that it's tight. If you, if you hear a lot of chattering, if it's shaking a lot, it's usually because the, the life center isn't supporting the mandrel well enough and you need to tighten that. Okay, next is the tool rest. Now this is important to set up perfectly. Um, you need to adjust it so that it's as close to the wood without touching it. Turn it by hand to make sure it's not getting hit. So if it hits it, you know, move it back a little bit and get it fairly close. Um, and lock that down. Then you want to adjust the height of this. Make sure it's up at slightly below the center line. Just a little bit lower, and uh, that way when the tool comes in, it hits it at the right spot. So this is tight, this is tight, that's tight, and the center is tight in. There's no moving. If I turn any part of this, everything else should turn. Okay, so even if I turn that, everything else should kind of turn with it. So that's what you need to do before you do any turning. Make sure the machine is perfect. Next is selecting your tools. Okay, so I have these tools here. If you see this uh, red diamond on it, that's probably the one you want to use for the uh, pens. They're small gouges there. Now the proper way to hold the tool is put your finger into the groove so your hand is steady. You try to just hold out here and try to work it's going to be very difficult but if you stabilize yourself by putting your hand against the machine I know it's very close to the moving wood and it's kind of scary the first time but as, as long as you're in that groove you're not going to slip out. So put your finger in there, put the tool on top of the, the rest, make sure it's touching. If you lift up and you touch the spinning wood it's just going to slam it down. So it needs to be touching this, that's the whole reason it's there. Okay, So have it touching that and then bring your fingers in to help guide the tool. Now if you're going from left to right Sometimes I angle the tool a little bit this way and rotate it a little bit, not a lot, and then work my way across that way to go the other way. I come this way a little bit and work my way the other way. The first thing you want to do is just knock off all the corners and just make these round. Okay, I'll turn on the machine. You want it going really fast. This is a high speed operation. Now wood chips are going to be flying everywhere. I do have face shields and uh, safety glasses are definitely a must for this operation. Don't be surprised when wood chips come flying up in your face, go down your shirt, and all sorts of stuff happen. Okay? It's actually kind of fun. Now, if it doesn't come off easily, then you might have a dull tool, let me know and I will sharpen it for you. If you try to do this with a dull tool, uh, sometimes uh, the wood will just crack and break apart and you'll have to start all over. So sharp tool is a must. So I'm just bringing it in until it takes off the corners. So work your way in and over. Uh, 
I've just basically taken off the corners so now that's round. I'm going to do the same thing to the other one now. Okay, now the next step is I'm just going to take them down um, a little bit closer to the bushing. Okay, now I have a decision to make. Do I want to keep the whole pen straight like a typical slim line or do I want to add some shape to it? I like to add shape. It's actually safer <laughs> to add some shape to it because if you try to take the whole thing down to the same as the bushings, then uh, you're getting really close to the uh, brass tube on the inside. So I like to just take it down till it's really close to the bushing. Remember, you're going to be doing some sanding later, so leave a little bit. You can even feel it there. Once you take off the corners, it's actually not that dangerous to uh, touch it while it's spinning. You can actually feel the transition there. Okay, so this will be what I'm going to write with. Let's say this is the tip of my pen. So I want to go like that and then maybe come back in a little bit. Now remember, if you come back in, don't go any smaller than the bushing. If you do, you're going to hit the brass too. I have many students that uh, get a little carried away here and they go too far. So just make a little, a little ball there to, for a grip and the rest of my pen is going to come up straight. And then taper in a little bit. Do the bushing. Okay, so it comes out big, and comes out small, and then smaller till it matches the bushing. Then this one. It's gonna come up. Out and down. Okay, so I'll zoom in there. Alright, so I have general shape of my pen done. Um, that was pretty soft wood, so it did chip a little bit. So I need to do some sanding. Um, I have a lot of ridges over here, so I you know, wasn't very perfect in my straight pass there. So I got a lot of sanding to do. Now, to sand, I like to do that without the tool rest anywhere near it. So I move that all the way out of the way, and then I get some sandpaper. And I got 80 grit, 120, then 180, and 220, and 320, and 400, and then 600. Okay, I go through all of those grits, and then I do steel wool as well to uh, make make these pens super smooth. Okay, so watch carefully. And you only use 80 grit to get out the main defects in the pen. So don't use it too much, and try not to uh, sand down the 
the nice bushings. And you can already see the nice grain patterns that are appearing. It's going to get even better. I like to sand on the bottom. Check to see how the transition is. Because that's how it's going to feel when it's on the pin. A lot of your sanding is actually going to be done with the uh, rough regret sandpaper. Okay, after sanding it while the machine is running, it's going to leave a lot of scratch marks that go in a circular motion around the pen. So to get rid of those, lightly sand back and forth while turning the lathe by hand. See how I'm turning it? So I'm turning it by hand and sanding it back and forth, lightly. Okay, now I'm going to do that exact same process with the, uh, the 120 grit, but I won't take it nearly as long. Turn it off, stand with the grain as you're spinning it by hand, move on to the next grit, turn on the machine. Make sure you get everywhere. And then stand it side to side while you're turning it by hand. Now I'm to 220. Turn it off, side to side, 320. Turn it off. Side to side. Now I'm at 400. Once we get to really fine grits, now we can probably spend a little bit longer. We're really trying to get the smoothness, get the factor going, make it nice and shiny. Make sure you get all the clean the sandpaper. You know, get the dust out of it so it doesn't clog it up.
and it's side to side. And if you notice any scratches or problems, then you probably went, didn't spend long enough with a rougher grit. Go back down to a rougher grit, get the scratches out, then work your way back up again. You want this to be perfect. This is 600 grit. I've seen up to a thousand, but the steel wool is good enough for that, so I don't use it. <coughs> now it's actually starting to get shiny. without any polish needed. Pretty nice. Okay, here's a small piece of steel wool. Uh, steel wool comes in different grits. You know, this one, if you buy this, the package, it should have four zeros on it. So quadruple aught steel wool. And uh, we'll just rub it on here while it's on first. And then we'll do it again when it's off. Okay, I'll turn it off and do the same thing. This really polishes it up. But if that's not shiny enough for you, we do have some what we call friction polish. I don't want to buy it from the store. It's called, you know, Mylans. There's other types of friction polish. Um, I put it into a squirt bottle. Notice how it's got all that white stuff at the bottom. That's the uh, stuff that does the work. So make sure you shake it before you use it. All right, to apply the polish, you need to get a small rag, just a small piece. If you try to use a large piece, then the uh, chances of it getting wrapped around uh, the workpiece it gets larger. So use a small rag. All right, so I can get the friction polish, shake it up, and then I'll put some on the on the pen while it's stopped. Notice the difference there; makes it quite a bit shinier when you thought it couldn't get any better, it does. Alright. So once you got it on there, turn on the machine, bring the rag in, Put it on there and slowly work it back and forth as you slowly increase pressure downwards. And what's going to happen is it's going to start building up friction, which is how it got its name, friction polish. It's going to start getting hot and that'll dry the polish on there. Okay. Nice and shiny. Turn off so you can see the grain of the wood. All right. Now we're ready for assembly, but we got to take it off first. So first thing you want to do is move the tailstock back. this off. Please don't lose this. It's not magnetic so it can't stick on the magnet so put it back on when you're done. The bushings can stick up top. So I'm going to take this off. 
I want to keep these together the way that I want them to go together so I don't mess that up later. I'll just put this right back on so it doesn't get lost. Alright, for a pen you're going to need, obviously, the pen. You're going to need a transmission. This is what makes the pen go in and out. You need the tip of the pen. A band to go in the middle. And a cap to go on the top. And then a clip. And the clip is where you can have some fun. Also the band, I have different types of bands. Uh, I got medical uh, themed clips. Uh, deer head. Golf club. There's a golf club. Bowling pins, tennis rackets, music. Um, there's a music one. That's pretty cool. I have a lot of students that are musicians and students that like to make them for their parents and some of their parents are doctors so the uh, medical clip and the uh, music note are very popular. Also people go hunting and and so the the, uh, the one with the deer head is really good. Uh, football for football players and tennis and baseball. A little baseball. And that's actually, yeah, that's baseball. And then I have my regular, just plain gold clips. Okay. Um, let me show you how to put that together now. Now, all these things go together as what they call a press fit. So they, you actually have to use a vise to push it together. Um, but I'll show you by hand how it will actually happen. So the tip is going to go in that way, and then it'll be pushed together. And then make sure, yeah, make sure you do the tip first. If you don't do the tip first, you'll run into problems with the second part here. Okay, then this will go in next as a transmission. And that, I like to put that in. So that'll go in just when the, uh, just when the brass stops. So put it into about there. And then we'll do some you know, fine tuning later. So just till the brass disappears to start out with. You can't do it by hand. I'm going to have to go to a vise to do this, but just letting you know what I'm going to be doing. So that's how that part goes together. And then the other part, you take your clip and your cap, put them together, and push it in right there. Okay? So it's very easy. And after it all is together then the pen goes down inside and just screws in there. All right. But you put your bushing, not bushing, that's the uh, the band on in there. And that creates the separation between the two. I know some people that leave the band out so they can do more design. All right, so again, the first thing is to put the, the tip on, so just put it in there. So you get it started by hand and then finish it with the uh, vise. If it's not going in perfectly straight, back it up and then try again. Don't go too tight or you can um, crack everything. So there it is, put that part put together. Um, next, I'm going to put the transmission in. So I'll have to open this up a little bit more. So put it in by hand as far as it'll go, just to get it started. Try to keep it straight. And go until that brass part just disappears. Now here's where you have some testing to do. So screw that in as far as it'll go and twist it and the uh, the tip will pop out. Now make sure it's coming out as far as you want it to go. If not, then take it out and push it some more. I always like to err on the side of too little po poking out because it's really hard to go the other way. 
So just keep pushing it and pushing it until you like the amount that's coming out and then call it good. I think I want a little bit more so I'll just do just a, a tad more and I like that. So now I'm going to do the clip. So I'll just put that together like this. And then clamp that. Oh, there's the other half of the pen. I get the ring, put it on there, put it on there, and just push it together, and voila, we have a finished pen. So it's really cool looking. And it's kind of got that holographic effect to it. Pretty cool. Okay, here's a chain that I've been working on. It's a uh, Byzantine weave, I think. Anyway, it goes in sets of twos. So it's kind of hard to see here. But sets of twos, two by two by two, and then it folds over. And that's the tricky part. So I'm going to show you how to do just that part really quick. So I have a set of two rings here. That I've already attached. Then I'm going to attach two more. Okay. Now you got to use pliers for this. Two of them. Okay. So there's one. And then here's number two. This is going to take some time. Guessing a couple hours just for a chain for that's long enough for one of these pens. Alright, so I got two and two. I'm gonna do another set of two before we do the tricky part. for the tricky part. I have to zoom in for this one. Alright, so I have three sets of two. Two, two, two. Now the tricky part is I take the last two and I fold them over. Okay, so they fold it over each other. Then I open those the next two up and the original two that I folded over okay the original two that I folded over are now back there okay and then You take your ring and you put it through. Actually, I'll do two of them. Whenever you put one ring in, you put two rings in. And then just continue on. Three sets of two, fold it over, and then hook on to the one that you folded over. Pretty easy. I'll do some more detailed chainmail stuff later.